Okay, and welcome to another episode of Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop with me, your host, Cool Dude Clem. Anyway, today on the bench is my DAT recorder, which I'm going to make a few modifications to. So, if we take a look at the back, you can see we've got analog input, analog output, digital input and output, optical input and output, and whatever the hell this GPI in is. But this presents a bit of a problem, because all of this is balanced audio, and the rest of my equipment is unbalanced. Just to give a brief explanation of that, this is your typical audio cable. I'm sure you've all seen these. And basically, what we've got here is this pin in the center, where your audio signal goes, and that is connected to this wire here. And around the outside is the signal return, which also acts as the ground, and that is connected to this wire here. And that is a typical unbalanced audio cable. Okay, this one's a video cable, but it's the same thing. But on balanced audio, it's a completely different story. You've got three connections. You've got the hot right here, which is where the signal goes, then the cold, which is the signal return, and the ground is separate. So, as you can see, this presents a bit of a problem. Anyway, I had a couple of solutions for this problem, neither of which were very good, but I'm going to tell you what I did. So, my first idea was to connect the ground of the ordinary wire to the ground on the XLR, like so. Although I wouldn't have actually done that, I would have actually used a plug, but I'm just doing this to show you. And then the signal wire would go to the hot. Now that worked, but not very well. Because I was only getting the signal from one side, I had to turn everything up, you know, I had to crank it up quite a lot, and even then it still wasn't all that good. Now, the other thing I came up with, because there is no earth connection on this, I thought, how about I have the signal wire connected to the hot as I did before, but have the ground connected to the cold. And that actually worked a lot better. I got a lot more signal that way. But of course, that's not the best thing to do because then the ground of this is floating and it, you know, it could be at a potential of maybe 100 volts or more. And, you know, it's just not that good, you know. And of course, if the case came into contact with anything that was grounded, well, it would short the ground and the cold together, which again, is not a very good idea. So what I'm going to do is add an unbalanced input and output to this thing. Now I'm going to use this GPI in. I'm going to disconnect whatever that's connected to inside, because I've never used that anyway. And this will be like the 5-pin DIN that you get on old tape recorders, such as this one here. Now if we look on the side, a 5-pin DIN, which is the main way I would get audio in and out of this machine. It also has the RCA phono jacks, so I could use those as well. But there you go. So how am I going to turn this into this, and how am I going to turn this into this? Well, the solution's been staring you in the face, and this is a little circuit that I've come up with. So, we can put an unbalanced signal in here, and we'll get our balanced signal out here. And the way this works is really simple. So we've got a transistor here, and you can think of this whole thing as a voltage divider, with a transistor acting as a resistor whose resistance changes according to the audio signal. So, as the audio signal swings positive, the transistor will conduct more, and the voltage here will decrease, and the voltage here will increase, and as the audio signal goes more negative, the transistor will conduct less, so the voltage here will rise, and the voltage here will fall. So, we have effectively turned a non-balanced signal into a balanced signal. Okay, it's not perfect, but it will do the job. So that's for turning an unbalanced signal into a balanced signal, but what about turning a balanced signal into an unbalanced signal, well, we'll get to that later. Right, so, breadboard time. So, I've built up that little circuit on the breadboard. Now, I haven't included the two DC blocking capacitors because we're going to see the output on the scope and as I've got the scope AC coupled, we, well, there's just no need for them at that point. 
I've also added this resistor to the input because the circuit was picking up a bit of high frequency noise and that helps to deal with that, so we're pretty much good to go. Right, so I've got my tablet as the signal source, I've got a frequency generator app on there. So, let's play the signal into the circuit and see what we get. And we have apparently nothing. The power is on, I don't know why this isn't working. Let's see if all the connections are good. Uh, actually, I've unplugged the tablet. Can't even hear it coming out of the tablet speaker. Um, bear with me a minute. I think the tablet's the problem here. Let's just try that again. Okay, get it playing. Oh, I can hear the tone coming out the tablet speaker if I hold it up to my ear. So hopefully this time we should have a response. Yeah, there we go. Well, we did have something. Now, what the heck is this? I have no idea what this is that's just come up. I'm sure I... Certainly sure I didn't call it up. Alright, let's ramp this up to one kilohertz. And nothing has changed. And if I touch the lead, it's definitely responding. Ah, oh, there we go, finally. Sorry about the delay. The tablet was playing up, but as you can see, it is now doing what it should be doing. So as you can see, we've got two opposing waveforms here. So they're both 180 degrees out of phase, and that is exactly what we want. So the yellow represents what the cold input is going to see, and the blue represents what the hot input is going to see. In retrospect, I should probably have swapped those colours around. That would have made more sense, but it's doing what it should be doing, and that's the important thing. So that might be alright, but what about converting balanced audio to non-balanced? Well, there's two ways we can do that, and you can see the two schematics that I've come up with right here. On the left, we have two transistors in a differential pair. And on the right, we have an op-amp that's configured as a differential input. And what both these circuits will do is they will only respond to difference between what's coming in here and what's coming in here, which is basically how balanced audio works. So first we're going to try this circuit here. Now, this circuit isn't perfect because it will amplify what's coming in. And in fact, this will amplify to quite some extent. In fact, it will amplify too much, and you're going to see that in action in just a moment. This is by no means a bad circuit, though. You often see this in microphone preamp front ends and amplifier front ends, doing all kinds of different things. So, yeah, it still has its uses. And then we'll try the op-amp solution. Right, so, here we are with the circuit built up and the tablet hopefully cooperating. So, let's put a signal into one side of the circuit, which is the two transistors set up as a differential circuit, and let's see what we get. There we are. And remember I said that there is amplification? I would say that's amplifying at about 15 times, and let me remind you, this is with just one side driven, so if we were driving both sides with a balanced signal, the amplification would be, well, it would just be way too much. It's already way too much, but, you know, it would be a lot more. So, let's connect this to the base of the transistor on the right, and let's see what we get from that. Hopefully my head wasn't getting in the way. And you can see we've got about the same. It's a little bit less because, you know, differences in the transistors and the resistors, you know, 
little tolerances like that. One thing I do want to point out is that if we bring channel 2 up, which is our input, at the moment they're both on the same amount of volts per division, but let's just bring channel 2 up. I've had to move channel 1 down the screen a little bit so we can get our voltage measurements. Now, if you'll notice, when we've got it connected to the transistor on the right, the output is in phase. As this goes up, so does this, and as this goes down, so does this. So, let's connect it to the transistor on the left, and you'll see we get the exact opposite. So, as you can see, it is now out of phase. 180 degrees out of phase, to be exact. And that is, basically, what we want from a differential input. Anyway, let's connect this to the output of my digital audio tape player, and you'll see how this circuit will fall flat on its back. Right, so, we've got our little circuit connected into the output of the DAT. Oh, and if you're wondering about the Pringles cans, well, that's how I'm mounting the camera to film the scope. Now, it appears to be picking up some high-frequency noise. I'm not exactly sure what that is. That might be coming out the DAT. That might be being picked up elsewhere. But anyway, I have put the camera in a really awkward place because I need to scoop past the camera to hit the play button on the digital audio tape. So, when we hit play... That's not looking too good. As you can see, the circuit has so much gain that it is just driving it. It's, it's driving itself into clipping. I mean, let me just uh, pause that and then try to find a more appropriate place to pause it. And it kind of looks like a data stream almost. But that's just because we've just got too much gain here. I mean, this thing is great for microphones and things like that, but. The output of this is just driving it too far. We could turn the attenuation on a little bit, that might help, but yeah, it's still clipping. Anyway, let's go on to the integrated circuit version. Alright, so here we are with the chip version of the circuit. Once again, connected into the output of the DAT player. So, let me just... move over so I can hit that play button and here we go and as you can see it's working absolutely perfectly no clipping the output does seem to be a little hot we're getting about 5 volts peak there but that shouldn't be much of a problem And I think we've come to the end of the whatever's on there, but you can see that works pretty good. Obviously, I cannot play any of this stuff because of, you know, copyright and things like that, but I have a much more simple solution than this, which is what we're going to take a look at in just a few minutes.